The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman here. This is the Tiger Technician Hour, 877-927-6648, July 1. Can you believe we're starting the second half of the year? just goes like that. Nothing. Boom. Um, so as we're looking at this, I had a question about the Qs. That's the index 100. Could there be a different count? You know... I didn't really get a different count. I do this innumerable times. Um, and if the Q's trading at 189.30 right now, up 2.56 in daily leg D, under the previous high of 191.32, I don't like that. I like to D's to be above the previous highs. And the same thing in the uh, weekly chart, you've got a peak C, so 191.33 stars legs D, in the weekly chart, oh, yep, leg D in the weekly chart, you can call it D slash B because that's that is a, a peak, but really it's I think D is going to be what we call it. And um, no, you can't call it D, it has to be D. And in the monthly chart, I, I just don't see anything else. Uh, so if you can come up with something, let me know or send it to me or discuss it, call in, whatever it is. But this V shaped pattern closing above 187.53, the high of October. Uh, that was back in, uh, it was actually, it was two months we went above it, but only one month we closed above it. Uh, that was in April. Uh, I pulled back for 84.74. Let me go back, let me go back, let me go back, let me go back. Okay, so let's let's look at this. Yeah, we'll do it together. Look, you got a peak D at 140.79 back in seven, uh, July of 2015. 2015, it's four years ago. And then there's a sharp pullback to 84.74. Then it goes to a higher high. So I call that E. It could be an A, but it makes no difference. Whatever it is, it had a Chapman Wave Roman Cannon, a sharp pullback after that, but it only pulled back to 94.84. So it went to a slightly higher high. I believe it went to right here. 114.79 was the high of July. And I think it was 115, I can't say. 115.75 was the high in December. And then it pulled back very sharply. 2015 goes into the low of 2016, 94.84. But either way, you see this A right here, which becomes a gray A at first because it's under that previous high. This becomes a restart. That's the whole thing in my chapter in the CD, Introducing the Chapman Wave Methodology. But then when it breaks out above that 50, 115 high of December, that starts a leg B. No matter how you count all this, even if that was an A, this would still be a B. So it's an E slash A, if you want to call it. Then it, calls, it goes to an A minus, because this is another A over here, lower down. You remember, you've got to count each peak and each trough. That's how you do it. It's your only obligation in the Chapman Wave methodology. So this leg B right here in August, was it? So 119.22 uh, and 119.66. So the October 2016 high is B. Then it goes all the way up, all the way up to a C. That was in 2017, and that was in... So 2018 in January, pulls back for a month and goes, remember that horrible month, that first week, uh, first two, three weeks, and then February has a nice rally, and then it goes March, goes to a high of 175.21, and that's D. Then it goes to E and an F. Everything works perfectly. There's just nothing wrong here. We managed to get that top exactly in the Dow. Uh, and pulled back very sharply, goes to 143.46, uh, in the queues went from 187.53 in October of 2018 down to 143.46 in December. And now we've got a brand new A or 
G. I don't know. You, uh, it's hardly likely G, but it could be exactly the same. Patterns are, uh, really repeat very often. So this high that was made right here back in December of 2015 at 115.75, that could be turning into a G, and then there'll be a pullback. Maybe there's a sharp pullback, but it's way above the 143.46 high, and then we start a peak A and a peak B, and then we. we, we so either way, so far this looks like a really good. Uh, set of uh, chops. I like it. All right. Uh, I hope I'll answer the question. <laughs> um, okay, let me know if there's still a question uh, involved. Now, let me go through this again. This is the beginning of the month. We've got the end of the month, so we can talk monthly charts here. We've got uh, 26,722, only up 122 after being up much higher. It was at 26,890, 170 points higher earlier on. Still didn't go to a leg C, and that's the reason why I'm saying that this Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone, such an important, uh, uh, in my work, I have just certain techniques that we repeat over and over and over, and each one of them has been developed not over years and sometimes decades of, of uh, practice, of due diligence, of uh, correcting errors that I'd made when, when everything said that there should be a pullback. Let's call this an inside track repellent zone. It says there should be a pullback here. Yeah. It, it says if you break and close above this dashed green line, you've now broken out. In this case, it would also be a leg C, but it would also be above that trend line. It means now this whole area of resistance becomes support. These are techniques that I use all the time. MACD, look at the MACD, is still very strong is forming an M-shaped formation. It says it's, it's beginning the process of running out of steam, but it hasn't uh, run out of steam yet. And at the same time, stochastic says, whoa, under 80% at 67%. That's not too good. So there's a divergence. So another reason why I say the upside, I think, is limited. We will squeak towards new re recovery highs in some areas. It'll be all-time highs, maybe even in the Dow. And then I think we've got to be prepared for some kind of a consolidation. All right. Got that out the way, done a lot of work. Let's just run this real quickly, give you parameters. The Dow needs to hold 25,530 uh, support this week. Anytime it closes below that, that's a real problem. Um, S&P is uh, trading at 29.63 up 21, has gone to a leg C, has gone to a new all-time high, has gone to a leg E in the weekly chart. Ooh, interesting, isn't this, huh? And F slash A in the monthly chart, everything about it points to it probably being a new leg A, very powerful breakout from 23.46 to today's higher, 23.46 to 29.77, uh, 20, 20, unbelievable, 20, 23.46. And this is still a leg A to the upside, and we're halfway into the year. We're actually starting the second half of the year, July, and there hasn't been a peak yet. That is very positive. That is very positive. All right, let's get on with the story here. So S&P, all I'm going to say is that the 2948 to 2942 is probably an area that needs to hold this week. If there's a pullback below that, that is really not good action. I just did the cues, but I'll do it again. QQQ trading right now up to 270, uh, almost at the low of the day, but it did gap up huge. I think that gap will be full, but it doesn't have to be full. The immediately we can sweep to slightly higher highs in the interim. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman tells us 127. S&P's up 22. Love to take your calls. I'll be right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. 
The TAS Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of TAS Market Profile, the TAS Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Don't miss the last chance to sign up for the TAS Profile Scanner at just $97 a month. Starting July 1st, we're raising the price to $197 a month. This is your last chance to lock in the $97 rate for as long as you remain a subscriber. And as always, new subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk. Don't miss this last chance to sign up at the low rate of just $97 a month. Sign up for the TAS Profile Scanner today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, so just before I go to uh, the nitty gritties of the different uh, areas, I had a question about BIP. This is Brookfield Infra Infrastructure Partners LP. And it's trading at 43.53. It's up 60 cents. It is at not an all-time high, but it's at a recovery high. And the question was, is it too late to get in? This is part, of, I think this is really part of uh, the infrastructure. Um, I, I, I've seen this before. I can't even remember. I think we once had it on my list, but we never did anything about it. Or maybe we did. I just don't remember. It was a long time ago. I like it very much. But here's the issue. It's in leg D, second leg D in the weekly chart, leg B, only leg B in the monthly chart. I haven't had a chance to do the count in the daily, but I love the look. But have it just on a purely technical basis. You see the stochastic. You see the way the stochastic has this big spike, this arch formation, and then comes back again with the price, and then comes back with the price, and then goes back up again, and then comes back down again with the price. We're having the same spike to the upside. The only difference is that uh, in this case, the stochastic is very strong. The OBV is at a uh, high. So I, I love this at 43.55. I, I, since you're a very long-term position player, I would normally say, look, yes, it can go higher. It could even go a point, a point and a half higher. But if there's a pullback at any stage for whatever reason, it could get stuck for another two, three weeks and then pull back to the 42 and a half area, a point down. It's a big deal. If it's a point down and a point up, well, why not you know, take, take a nibble? Well, the high, I think it's the all-time high, was at 46-something. Let me just check what the price is. Maybe less. Yeah, 46.88, back in December of 2017, is making a cup formation. My target would be the 46s. So I'm going to say to uh, Peaky and the Dan, yes, in your case, I'm going to say to you, start a small position right now, but that's not your position. 
This is just to get a feel for it because you don't want it off your radar and you're a longer-term player and I think it's going at least two points higher, which is 5%, which is fine. I don't think it's got more than 3% to 4% or even 5% to the downside. I think it's more time. Look at the way he makes these stair-step moves and then it pulls back. So, yeah, nibble, just nibble here at 43.56. This is not your real position. This is just to, because you're interested and you really would like it and it looks great. The monthly, monthly chart is good. The weekly chart, it's above the nine period moving average. This is BIP trading at 43.56. And we called it Brookfield Infrastructure Partners LP. I, I do like it. Last time it had a D, just pulled back modestly to the nine period moving average. That's at 42.45. So, yeah, you've got. You've got yourself a one point to one and a quarter point risk, but start it here and then let's look at it again together. If we can pull back to the 43, sorry, 42.50, I'd love to see it at 42.20 with a chance of making one more slip to the downside because then I think it fits into the pattern of buy the, sell the highs and buy the lows in a channel formation. Um, that's on a shorter term basis, longer term. It says buy every pullback, but I, that's not my belief right now. I think you need to just let it play out because this is a second move in the weekly to a D. So now I get a little more cautious. Okay, so that's that one. And Tilray, uh, is that what it's called? Tilray, Tilray, Tilray. Yeah, Tilray Inc. This is in the uh, med I don't know if it's in the medical cannabis area. Um, medical cannabis. A wonderful example of the Chapman Wave Eiffel Tower, straight up, straight down, capital A pattern, hit 300 round number in September of 2018, had a little bit of a problem, went down to the 34s. Trading right now at 47.69. So the question, where was the question, where was the question? Um, a gold 25 in the debt. Yes, so I, I don't know if you've played this before, and I say play because it's really difficult to position yourself in such a long-term decline. A couple of years, and uh, well, a year and a half. Oh, no, it's only a year. And uh, But look at the move to the downside. You're long. Okay, that's what I want you to hear. If you're long, I suspect, and you probably know this, uh, Goldie, you, you can see that there's a really good chance that if it can take out at 47.64 right now, if it can close, Two sessions. I want two sessions. I want you to know it's not just a one-time blip, and it needs to close above the high of 48.48. That was the high of the 27th of June. Then I think you're looking at a leg D in the next two weeks above 51.03. With that said, the MACD is strong, but the stochastics pull back quite sharply, and that weekly chart is just repairing a lot of damage. So it needs to hold a 45.50 area. That's a two points. I don't know if, what kind of stop you have, but at any point, if it closes under 45, yeah, let's call it 45.50. If it closes under that, I would just say hold off, not just now, but you're probably going to have to hold off for a few weeks. But at this particular moment, I like the action. Let me just look at the 120-minute chart. Yeah, the 120-minute chart confirms what I said. It needs to get about 48.48, and then it's going to look a lot better. So that's Tilray. Um, now, I've got a couple of things that I want you to do. Just real quickly, the IWM. IWM has gone to a leg E with a red candle, even though it's making a higher high than just the other day. It, it's up 77 cents at 156.27. This is going to be a problem. Is there such a kind of, is there a rotation going on? I almost had this last week to say, you know what, there could be some crazy kind of rotation here, and you could finally see a leg D in the weekly chart of the IWM, the Russell 2000. And then the more I looked at some of the stocks within it, it's just a real mixed thing. And on any day, you could have a really good move so that on a percentage basis, it's up 0.51. And the Dow is up 0.51%. 30, and the Dow's up 0.36 percent. The S&P's up 0 0.65. So it's in the good category here, um, but it is red. It's a red candle. They haven't come way off the, the high. So I'm just going to say um, the IWM is acting much better over the last three sessions. Not good enough, but much better. And the reason why I mentioned it is that Thursday, I thought maybe Friday, uh, just to have it long because it was so oversold that it needed to play catch up. Now, I might have played catch up, so we're going to be watching this closely. But I just say, Russell 2000, at this particular point, uh, there's a lot that needs to be done to improve the technicals. 
uh, in the uh, certainly in the in the daily chart and the monthly chart needs a lot of work so that's that okay here we go crude oil crude oil right now is up 48 cents 58.79 let me read this if i can find it maybe i'll have to wait um so last week at some point uh bob sent me uh he sent it to a couple of people an email and it says just heard a news brief uh, news brief on a meeting by the eu members to attempt to have iran not exceed the enrichment quotas set in the nuclear development agreement it may be that eu buying oil from iran uh, may be an attempt to settle the agreement on nuclear development so the big question he has is um, came later on and sent me a questionnaire question. Uh, no, uh, wrong Bob. <laughs> Let me find it. Um, so the question was, is crude oil going to really come down sharply? Is there a glut? Is that glut going to be shown up as uh, in, the, in the price point because it keeps getting weaker and weaker? No, I'm looking at crude oil and I think crude oil is in an area right now that says, and it's actually very interesting because I'm stalling because I like to hold off until after the break before I actually tell you my conclusion. And I'll tell you back in a moment, the Dow's only up 95 now, S&P is up 18, and we'll talk about crude oil and this whole potpourri uh, of, of different sectors. And I think crude is going to be important. So I'll be back and we'll talk about crude. You'll have to come back to hear what I say. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks, we're back. So let me just go back to where I was, uh, if I can find that. Uh, yeah, crude oil. So crude oil, 
um, is held very nicely. It's stuck against this 200 period exponential moving average of 59.82. Uh, 59, yes. It's trading at 58.98 of 51 cents in leg C. The MACD and Stochastic are good enough to say it could go higher. I I said this about a week ago. I, I believe that crude oil should trade between 61.75 ish. This is the continuous contract as resistance and 57.70 as support. Uh, we're in the middle of that right now, or just sort of the lower half of that right now, and that's kind of what I'm looking at. I don't think it's going to break down, not yet, but I do see that the upside just at the moment is limited. If there is a close but above 62.50, that's something completely different because now all of a sudden the 63s to the 64s becomes a magnet. I think that's going to be a bit of a problem just on the shorter term. Uh, let's go to the gold now. The gold itself is down 19 at uh, 1394. It made a peak effort 1442.9. Remember, there's a continuous contract, so I must just double check to see if that wasn't smoothed out and changed. 1442.90, that was uh, just six sessions ago, five sessions ago. And now what we're looking at is tested the 14 period moving average. The MACD is good, stochastics pulled back under 80%, at 73%. The technicals in the weekly chart after the Chapman Wave Cup and Ladle breakout are still very favorable. They still look very good. And it's only a leg C in the monthly. I suspect that in this particular period, let's just look at silver. I'm going to get, go through a couple of things in a moment. Silver right now is just down a little bit. It's down point, uh, well, 0.63 percent. It's not a little bit. 15.24, down 0.09. Had that peak C. Wow, it almost looks like Tilray there. Uh, it looks as if it wants to go now back. Remember, I said, watch this line. I said this weeks ago. I said, watch this 200 period exponential moving average at 15.35. Why? Because I think you're going to go over it and under it and, over it and, over it and turn it into some kind of a magnet unless you break decisively away from it. And it was close today. But if it goes to 15.10 or less, that's a breakdown. If it can hold here nicely and have a little bit of a pop to the 1535, 200-period moving average again, it means that's a magnet that's going to hang around. Even if it goes high, it's going to come back. Even if it goes lower, it's going to come back. I want to see this as a magnet to see. Uh, I want to talk about it as if it's a magnet and let's see if it, it remains in this rectangle formation. Limited upside, limited downside. If we go to uh, EUR, USD, the euro, the euro is, has made a peak D with a very sharp pullback. There's that rectangle. Finally, it broke that rectangle to the downside. And I had said before, the weekly chart looks okay. I didn't like the doji candle close on Friday. So he has a close uh, on a daily basis that says uh, it's a problem. All right, so that's the euro. If you look at USDJPY, which is the yen, dollar-yen currency pair, a nice leg B to the upside. Uh, fourth day of rallying, and I, I like this just on a short-term basis. At 108.44, it's going to have a lot of resistance in the, in the low 109s. Uh, next thing, we're talking about trucks in the den. The Ford F is for Ford. A leg E to the upside today, pulling back after that intraday spike. Now it's full of the gap, and it's at the low of the day. I've been impressed over the weekend looking at Ford, General Motors. Look at this. I mean, they're not breaking down. They're holding well. So there's this rotation that, that's going on throughout the market to say that some stocks, for instance, look at Intel in the semiconductors. Intel trading up nine cents today at 47.95. But look at applied materials. Applied materials spikes up at the low of the day right now, but still up 72 cents at 45.63, and has screamed to a leg E in the weekly chart, leg B in the monthly chart, and a leg C, just a leg C in the daily. So it's saying that e even in the semiconductor area, the SMHs having spiked to a leg E to the Chapman Wave inside track. Uh, so it's, this is the inside wedge resistance line, this green line. Hit it exactly and pulls back. MACD is good. Stochastic's good at 84%. So I'm looking at this in a... About three weekends ago, was it two weekends ago, I showed the how the strength of the monthly chart to say that even at the low, when it plummeted from 114s down to 80 in December, the price didn't drag down. 
the nine period exponential moving average and it's rallied and that's really a big positive and it remains a positive even if there is a pullback from this gap up high to say hey we're not quite ready to do the big stuff right now that's a fantastic move going from 97 to 115 we have not been long we covered our shorts we were short from the 100 off the 120.71 high in april we got short at 116 it went all the way down to the 98, 97.61 was the low. Down at the 98, we were already covering almost the last position. Then the last position was at about 103, 105, and we're out. And then I should have said, you know what? There must be an oversold bounce. I, did, I said it, but I didn't think it would last. This has lasted a lot longer than anticipated. But I have to tell you that that monthly chart is really impressive, and it says that later in the year, you might see the SMHs testing and breaking the 120.71 all-time high. Uh, question about EEM. EEM right now coming up once, coming up twice. 43.34, uh, leg E to the upside. Oh, it actually looks like the semis, doesn't it? Hmm. D, E. Well, they will kind of go together, I guess, international stuff. Yeah, so this is, um, yeah, this, this confirms for me that I think there's some limited upside for the markets, generally, there should be a little more. The wave, in other words, it's saying high tide is coming in sometime in the next day or two, but the waves don't know that. So those waves can go a little bit higher before we start some more of a consolidation. I think July is going to see quite a choppy, choppy month. And this time we might see a couple of sharp down days rather than these big up days as we do some consolidating. But I'm still a mega bull in terms of outlook for 2019 going into 2018. But in the meantime, back at the ranch, let me go through something else. Question about the financials. Yeah, what was it? Uh, just, uh, okay, financials. The XLF is trading at up 27 at 27.88. I like this. I spoke about it on Friday. That it was breaking the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. It spiked above at 28.14, was the uh, high of the 1st of May. Now it's the 1st of June, the high is 28.05. Uh, nine cents off that high, and I do think it's going to go to a leg D, and that'll make a leg D at 28.15 in the weekly chart as well. Very subtly, we start, look, we, oh, finally, let's just look at that. We've broken out for the very first day of July. We actually broke the down channel inside track repellent zone. We're above it, except it's three hours into the first trading day of the first trading day, uh, first trading week, of the first trading month of the second half of the year. So um, all I can say is this is a nice start, but the, it's nothing. These are hours, not a month, not a month's worth of trading, but it's a really good start to say, hey, finally, there's a push against that trend line, and it hopped over it. Let's see how the month uh, concludes. But yes, that's why we, in a bank stock, done very well. Uh, we're in um, other areas that are doing very nicely, and we just got back into a position today that we'll see how this one's going to turn out. But in the meantime, I wanted to also answer a question here about, oh, uh, let me just show you this here. This is the 10-minute E-mini going towards the 200-period uh, moving average of 29.60. It's a 29.64. I'll be back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. What should you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190.
It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let Gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. So I thought this was very interesting. Uh, for my subscribers, um, most of my subscribers know that I've been talking about uh, the skyscraper phenomenon for decades, not just uh, recently, but really for a long since back in 1980s. <clears throat> so in Boston, one Dalton, Boston's commanding new skyscraper conjures architectural magic. That's his building right here in the middle. Uh, the, you know, Boston, this is the Prudential Center. The Christian Science Center is over here. This is a property right opposite the Sheraton Hotel, Park Plaza Hotel, Park Plaza Hotel. And uh, so this has gone up. All of a sudden, Boston, which was the, which was the uh, <clears throat> college town of the Northeast, becomes really a pretty, it's a major city. And if you know par, uh, the, the uh, roads, uh, the the, the um, time consumed going to work is evidently one of the records in the country. It just it's, it takes a long time. So I show my subscribers this, and I've been showing them buildings uh, for quite a while in the Boston area. But this one here is very interesting. I actually like this design. I've I've always hated this Prudential since I got you. I called it one of the one of the besides the three other buildings. This is the Prudential. Uh, the, the it was the library, the new library. Now they're finally, after decades, they've done something to the front of the the new part of the library to help and make it ameliorate the ugliness that it was with all that concrete. And then the concrete building, City Hall, was just one of the worst. And then the Heinz Center. I I love the. Uh, can you see it? No, it's not even here in the picture. I love the John Hancock building. I've got pictures of it as the world's tallest plywood building. And then they had to put the glass back because they had to replace the, all the glass. Or even after it was finished, they had to do all the glass over. It hadn't opened yet. So this is a, I love this design. I think it's terrific. That's not the point. The point is above the turnpike. Now what they see, this is what cities do. They've never had so much income coming in. Taxes and incomes are, are, are improving. Everything's improving. Housing, boom, real estate. It's everywhere you look. But the spending boom is unbelievable. <clears throat> and the uh, government, the, uh, the federal, whatever it is, the, the cities, each town, they're overspending. Well, 
Um, there's a great article this morning I, I was reading. It just it goes through uh, basically the spending. That money's there. It's just being spent uh, excessively. I mean, these things are important, but it's excessive. So my question to my subscribers, to myself, really, is <clears throat> every time, I, as long as I've been in Boston, which is a long time, <clears throat> at a certain point when they start talking about hotels that are new hotels needed for the uh, they would keep moving it from from the World Trade Center wherever it's going to be um, I say oh my god we've got another couple of months and then we go into another recession this has gone on a long time <clears throat> and the way I'm looking at it especially if you're looking at New York Brooklyn New York and you go all the way through the Northeast when I go through Connecticut I see the same thing on the way to New York I, I have to tell you I don't know when this top is coming in real estate, but when you look back over a period of time, and I've done this ever since I've been, I, whatever city I go to, when I suddenly see a very tall building <clears throat> or a massive construction, I always want to know what was the time period? Why, why did the council allow that to go through? Because it's always at a special time that they say, oh, you know, the income, yeah, 120 stories, and oh, yeah, we, we've got to let that go through. But like the casino here in Boston, right? Like the Encore Casino. It all gets passed, but there's a lot of money that's involved. And at a certain point, you look back and you say, oh, well, that was like the top of the market. They allowed that because they wanted the income, but they were being greedy. It's hubris. And I'm looking at this, I'm saying, where's the hubris? Where are we? I think we're getting closer. I don't think it's just yet. I think there's still some time. But we are absolutely getting closer and closer to some kind on the northeast here of a pretty decent construction decline. And I, I don't know when it's coming, but I think we're getting closer and closer. I wanted to show this because it's part of the history, part of what I do for my subscribers to my opening call, besides all the other charts over the weekend that I show. Um, I mean, just everything from analysis. Let me see if I can find one uh, right here. Right, 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 right here. What is that? Yeah, that's my Dow analysis. The Dow daily is in a buy mode. The Dow weekly is in a buy mode. The Dow Monthly is in a buy mode, and I give you all the parameters for daily, weekly, monthly. And in sum, this is what we're looking at. So it's a very detailed report. And as I say, we've had some really good successes. We managed to pick just the day before the, the high of the Dow in April to go short, and we managed to pick the exact day to go long, um, uh, June, uh, June the 3rd. And we've had some really nice trades, a nice position play. So if you're interested, um, my opening call, that's my, the, the opening call, that's what it's called. Go to the front page of TFNN, you'll see, um, you'll be able to get it for free for a month as a trial. Okay, so uh, a trial big meaning you get your money back if uh, you're dissatisfied. So now we've got the XLF acting very nicely. The IAA, I've spoken about this before, this is the, um, the uh, what is it called? It's called the iShares US Broker Dealer and Securities ETF. This is very important. What I've been saying for a long time is that if it starts to trade in the 65, 64.57 was the all-time high uh, most recently, and um, but if it starts to trade in the 65s to turn the 63s into support and then can push even a little higher, that's going to tell me that people are buying. The brokerage houses are starting to see money come in and that people are starting to trade because now they're getting the volume. And if you look at the CME, uh, the CME is, in fact, the uh, Chicago Board. Uh, this is the Chicago Mercantile Board. Uh, this is the exchange. And it made a high on the 10th of June at 204.56. It just went straight up. Look at this weekly chart. It goes from the 162 area. What was that low? 161.05 in March of 2010. It makes one little minor peak and goes to a peak B all the way to 204.56, and that's only peak B. There's no other count. That should go to a C and a D. So the Chicago board is taking a bit of a breather here, and um, that's just telling me that more and more people are becoming interested in the stock market. I think that's really important, and that's very important for the mega bull to really pick up steam later this year. Okay, got that out of the way. 
TLT bonds. Now here's the query. Down at dollar three at 131.78, made a peak F in the Chapman wave, and you see this 132.58 high of uh, June the third. Let me just put that in as June the third here. So that is uh, six three, and you see the high that was just made um, seven day, eight days ago, uh, fractionally high 133.51. I put it in red because I thought this is pretty serious on the 20th of June. Now we're going to see something very important. This particular week is what we're going to see if this works or not. Look, you see this, see the way the MACD and stochastic was so strong at the June high? But look at this. We come into, if I can find it right there, we come into the June 20th high, 133.51, a higher high in leg F. And look how weak the technicals are. Price hasn't fallen much, but I'll explain something when we get back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour. The Dow is up 92, S&P is up 17. We'll I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. So 1.03 down in the TLT, the Lehman 20 Treasury Bond Fund. Uh, the MACD and Stochastic are way weaker than, before, than it was back in the beginning of June. The on-balance volume is still pretty good, but pulling back. So this says to me that we could be stuck in this rectangle formation, but a close... At the end of the week, holiday week, but we are here Friday. Uh, well, I don't think we're here Friday, but it is a market Friday. Um, if on Friday at the close, the TLT is trading under 130, 
That would say, and this is what I said to subscribers when I showed my weekly triple yield chart, I said there could be a little bit of a rally in the yields this week. I don't know if it should affect the market per se, but I can see that. Okay, so got that out the way. Question I had was, I don't want to know, should I add to my SPY position? No, Tim, I wouldn't do that, but perhaps tomorrow, well, in my, in my newsletter, I'll be giving some information about what I'm looking at. But perhaps tomorrow we could start the move that goes towards the end of the week to try to make that leg C in the Dow. But you're talking about the SPY, and the SPY would be in leg C right now. Uh, I don't like this red candle, but it's still way uh, above the actual Friday close. So that is a good sign. But it is in C. And then I'm going to say to you, I'm, I, I'll talk about it tomorrow. But in the meantime, I'm just saying I don't know if I would add to it right now. I'll tell you a price. Is it 294.81? If it gets to 293.60, you could just nibble on it. Not today. It has to be tomorrow. If you miss it by tomorrow, it's tough. But I would wait uh, 293.60, and that would be preferably tomorrow. And then there has to be an immediate reversal back to the upside. Now, what I wanted to say is that this is so far a high-level high in the uh, bonds so it hasn't broken down even though that is a peak f uh, the way i'm counting it right now because uh, the magnet and stochastic are deteriorating and is at the moment down below the 14 period moving average but i still think rectangle formation think of that if that's a high level consolidation something's going on that's different there are so many things that are going on that are, that are different i'll talk about that tomorrow in the meantime the iyt was a question i had and the iyt is bouncing to a leg e it's still not great action I'd like to see it keep moving higher, that's transports moving higher with the Dow going higher. I'd like to see that kind of continuity. Stay tuned for Steve, stay tuned for Dave, stay tuned for Tom O'Brien. I'll be back tomorrow. And please check out my opening call, my daily newsletter, a one-month trial free. I'll be back tomorrow.